Hello everyone and welcome back to another Excel Academy YouTube video. Today we are going to be taking a look at hydrographs which forms part of the fluvial geomorphology section of the IB geography syllabus. So let's ask ourselves the question what exactly is a storm hydrograph? A storm hydrograph is a graph showing the discharge in a river at a particular point over a period of time after rain has fallen in a drainage basin. They are useful in planning for flood situations and times of drought as they show the discharge um, that originated as precipitation. So the monitoring station is where the discharge is measured. Water collected from the tributaries will flow past the monitoring station and it's very important to see where this monitoring, monitoring station is positioned as it will influence the shape of the hydrograph. Before the storm, base flow is responsible for the discharge of a river. So let's take a look at the characteristics of a hydrograph, right? And let's first start at looking at the rising segment depicted here. So the rising segment shows how rapidly the discharge of the river increases. It shows that surface runoff causes a rapid increase and infiltration results in a less rapid increase. Okay, so those are important things to take note of. Surface runoff causes a rapid increase okay and infiltration results in a less rapid increase okay here we can see the lag time all right and the lag time is the difference in the time between the peak rainfall and peak discharge of the river all right here depicted in red we have before the storm and base flow is responsible for the discharge of a river. Okay, now let's take a look at peak flow, which is here at the top of our hydrograph, or otherwise known as a flood peak. Okay, and this occurs when maximum runoff is reached, and it also occurs after the rain has stopped. Here in green, we're taking a look at bankful, all right? Now, bankful is when the river's water level reaches the top of its channel and water floods onto the floodplain, okay? So that is bankful or bankful discharge. Okay, here um, on the right side of our hydrograph, we can see that there's a decreasing gradient and this is known as the falling segment, right? And the falling segment shows the rate of decrease in discharge and infiltrated water causes the decrease in discharge to be slower, okay? And here in gray, basically the area underneath uh, the peak flow to um, this red line here is the storm flow, right? Now, the storm flow is the increased volume of discharge, okay? And this includes both direct and indirect runoff in a single storm. Right, so let's look at factors affecting the flow of the hydrograph or affecting the hydrograph, right? So here we're taking a look at the size of the basin, okay, where it is given that rainfall is the same for both basins, right? Here it's important, rainfall is the same. Okay, so in a large catchment area, okay, um, we can see we have a shorter lag time here and the discharge will be greater because of a larger number of tributaries, okay? Um, that's expected in your large catchment area, right? We have a short lag time and that's because discharge will be greater because of the great number of tributaries. In your small catchment area, the discharge will be less and this results in a longer lag time with a greater volume, okay? Um, and this is because the, the discharge will be less because, of course, we have a fewer number of tributaries in this catchment area. And that's why it's regarded as a small catchment area. 
Okay, now when we're looking at the basin shape, right, a long narrow basin depicted here on the left, uh, water from the farthest tributaries will take longer to reach the point of outflow, and this results in an even runoff, and peak flow is evenly spaced. Okay, here on the right, we can see that this is a more circular basin, okay, and water from the tributaries covers about the same distance before reaching the point of outflow. And this results in a sharp peak, which we can see here at the top, a very sharp peak. And flooding is common in this shape uh, of drainage basin, right? So it's a good question that could be asked here. Um, they, they, they wouldn't really give you any indication of the shape. They wouldn't give you this diagram. Um, the examiner would just give you this hydrograph and would ask you um, what basin shape could this hydrograph be attributed to. And we would say circular basin because water, you would give this um, water from the tributaries covers about the same distance between before reaching the point of outflow, and this results in a sharp peak, which is depicted on the hydrograph given. Okay. Now, looking at the relief, all right, we can see here on the left that there's a steep terrain, right, or steep relief, where we have a very steep longitudinal profile, and steep slopes result in water running off quicker, okay, less infiltration results, and this results in a higher peak at the point of outflow, okay. So, steep terrain, less infiltration, higher peak at point of outflow, okay. Um, with the more gentle longitudinal profile, or rather flat terrain, or relief, Okay, we're going to have a gently sloping lowland area, which results in more infiltration, and thus the peak will be lower, which we can see here, right? So a lower peak, a higher peak for steep terrain, and a lower peak for flat terrain. Now looking at the underlying rock type, okay, uh, permeable rock allows water in and through it, okay, this results in less runoff and more infiltration, and thus the peak will be lower, right, so the peak flow will be lower. And some examples of more permeable or porous uh, rock include limestone or sandstone terrain, Okay, and here to our right, we are looking at impermeable or non-porous um, underlying rock, okay, and this is more shale or clay type of environments, okay, and these impermeable rock types do not allow water through, and this results in more runoff and less infiltration, and thus your peak flow will be high. All right, so climatic features, okay? So heavy rain and thunderstorms will result in a lot of runoff, creating a high peak flow, okay? Um, an increase in rainfall will result in high runoff and infiltration. The nature of rainfall will influence the peak flow shape, okay? And as we can see here on our right, Soft soaking rain will allow for more infiltration and a lower peak flow. Okay, looking at our vegetation cover, a large vegetation cover results in a decrease of surface runoff and an increase in infiltration. The peak flow will be delayed and much lower as we can see here. With less vegetation cover, this results in an increase in runoff and less infiltration. And peak flow will occur earlier and will be higher. Finally, we're going to be taking a look at human impact. Okay, um, a low level of urbanization, right? This results in 
or this is where there's less areas covered by artificial surfaces and this results in more infiltration than areas with high levels of urbanization. Peak flow is still early but not as high. In urban areas with a high level of urbanization, we find more artificial surfaces and developments in these urban areas which lead to less infiltration and more direct runoff. These impermeable surfaces and stormwater systems cause rapid runoff and high peak flow. Now, in your natural areas, we have greater infiltration than urban areas, which results in a later and a flatter peak flow, which we can see here, right? So it's a later peak flow, and a flatter peak flow, right? So the peak flow isn't as high as that of an area with the high level of urbanization. Thank you so much for watching this Excel Academy YouTube video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and share if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more content to come.